Honor multi-shape punch allows you to create five different shapes of punches. We've got borders, ovals, squares, circles, and corners with just one punch. I'm gonna demo how you're gonna work with this punch. It's a very intuitive system. You've got the top, which is magnetically attached to the base here. And we're gonna start by making a border. So along the base, you'll be looking to line up your paper with the border indicator at the top. So you've got two little lines there. You just wanna get it straight. And the top of your punch pops right back into place over that. The magnets pull it right into place where it needs to go so you don't need to fiddle with positioning it at all. Once you've got it in place, you're going to press firmly down on the top with the heel of your hand and that creates your punch. You simply lift off the punch top and to continue making a border, we'll slide our paper to the left and we're going to look for that little pink image at the center of our punch. It's slightly raised, so if you stick your finger over it there, you'll be able to feel that it's in place. You can make sure that your other side is lined up with that border line at the top, and then you can snap your punch back into place. You can just keep working your way along the edge like this, sliding it to the left. You could also work towards the right. And you'll notice as we get that last punch done, the top begins to come off. We're going to slide it back to the right this time to get that other. Now let's take a look at some of the unique shapes you can create using this punch system. We're going to start with a large 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And the cool thing about the magnetic punch system is that you can really punch anywhere on the paper you want. You're not limited to the edges. We can stick this paper anywhere over our punch and that punch top is going to snap right into place over the top of our paper. Once we've got our first punch done, we're going to be looking along the base here. We want to create a circle and we've got two choices here. We can do a six inch circle or a smaller four inch circle. Let's stick with the four inch one for now. So we're going to be looking for this little icon at the center. It's that brown one there. And we're gonna rotate our paper to the right, line it up with that icon. Again, it's slightly raised so you can feel that it's in place. We've got some outline guides along the top and bottom. And once you've got that in place, you can continue making your second punch. We're gonna continue working around the outside like that, rotating after each punch to the right. And again, you've got that circle indicator along the side. So this is just a, a very intuitive system. You can just kind of follow the guidelines on your punch, rotate your paper, and get that perfect shape. We've got one more punch to make here. And you'll see that the circle pops right out of the center of our paper. There we've got the circle, but we've also got the frame that we created by punching out that circle. So you've kind of got two punches here with one effort. With a little more effort, you could also create an oval. Let's take a look at how to do that now. There are a couple little tricks. The first one is to use the oval positioner along the side of your punch top. That means you want to line up your paper so that the edge is parallel with that oval positioner. Once you click your punch into place, you can kind of shimmy that paper around so that we get that edge parallel. You want to make sure you've got enough headroom at the top there. Once you're satisfied with the positioning, this is the trickiest part of the whole deal, and we're just going to make our first punch. Now you can continue as we did for the circle. This time, though, you're going to be looking for the oval indicator on the left side of your punch. So we've got that little blue icon at the center that we're going to be looking for. We'll line up our punch and make our second punch. We're going to continue and do this a second time, lining up that punch again. And here's the only other trick to making the oval we're going to now look
those circles and ovals work perfectly for some of your smaller focals. But if you've got something a little larger you want to map, I'm going to show you how to work with that now. We're going to be creating a square, and we're going to start off by using the border lines at the top of our paper. Now the cool thing about the square is that we can determine what size we want to make it. You could stop here and make a very tiny square. We want something a little larger, so let's continue using the border system and make a second punch along the top. We could keep going and make three or four punches, but we're going to stop here and rotate our paper. We're going to be looking for the square indicator along the side of our punch system here. So we're going to be looking for that little orange center in our punch. Once we've got it lined up, we can make that first angled punch at the top here. Now, if we wanted, we could stop here and make a rectangle and turn it again, but we want to make a square, so we're going to continue and make a second punch along the top so that all the sides are the same. And then we'll rotate again. Now, you'll notice mostly I've been using solid papers or papers with light background patterns, like this one, and that really helps to show off the punched edge you're making. You don't want a pattern so heavy that it will detract from your punched border, but these light patterns really do make a lovely accent to those punched borders. We're punching our last side here. And there you go, we've got our square. As with all the other shapes, we've also got a square frame there. And you could have really made this square any size you wanted, again, to fit any focal on your project. Last but not least, probably the quickest and easiest way to add some punches to your project is to create a corner. I'll show you how to do that now. You line up the corner of your paper with the top of your punch here. Now you could decide at this point whether you want a very small corner, just the tip of it, or something a little larger. Let's aim to get the tip of our paper even with this little magnetic circle here. Now I'll keep our corners even all the way around. All you need is one punch to create a lovely corner, and if we continue doing that on all four sides, in just four punches we're going to have a perfect frame for our photo or journaling or other accent on our project. And again, this is probably the easiest way to add some punches. You want to cut that matting to the size you want before you punch those corners. But you could do this to any size of matting, and you're going to end up with that beautiful frame there, perfect for any accent. So again, using this punch system, you've got five possibilities of different shapes, borders, ovals, squares, and circles. Let's take a look at those now. You've also got corners, and with each of your shapes, you're also going to get a frame that matches it. And again, for the square, you could really make that in an unlimited number of sizes. So you've got lots of options to fit any focal that you're going to be using on your project.